macOS Ventura is finally out to the entire public, and in this video, I wanna go over some of those major changes that came with macOS Ventura, but also I wanna talk about some of those smaller changes that you're gonna see make a day-to-day -day impact and enhance your productivity without you even noticing. So without further ado, let's talk about macOS Ventura, but first, a quick word from our sponsor, Setup. Are you looking to avoid paying thousands of dollars for licensed Pro Mac apps? Well, channel sponsor Setup is an awesome platform that makes it super easy to discover new apps and tools you need to stay efficient. There are new applications being added to Setup regularly, so there's always more to look forward to. And in addition to all these apps being the full Pro versions, all updates to these applications are free. With Smart Search, you can simply type in a task you're looking to accomplish, and Setup will present you with a selection of great options you can choose from to get the job done. And then you've got Collections, which gives you an assortment of pre-made app packages to help you solve a task, get more organized, and increase your productivity. And if you want to take your project off of the Mac and onto your iPhone, you're able to do so with support for compatible iOS companion applications. As opposed to paying $8,000 in licenses, Setup is just $9.99 per month, and users can try Setup for free for one week to see how well it works for you. Be sure to check out the link to Setup in the description below, and a big thanks to MacPaw for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. So let's get right into this video everybody. Just to preface, I am using an M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage for macOS Ventura 13.0. But for the first feature, we gotta talk about Stage Manager. Now whether you love it or you hate it, Stage Manager did come to macOS Ventura. Why it came, I'm not 100% sure why it did, but as you can see, it does work as advertised, right? It works exactly like it does on the actual iPad itself. So if I open up the notes application, you can see that there is an, a left-handed app shelf over here that we can grab stuff and move it over. If I wanna click on this, then it turns into little piles and it works the same way that it would with the iPad OS 16.1 update, which is that you get up to four different applications per little group over here on the left-hand side. And you can have up to four there, so up to 20 applications open at the same time. Now, I'm not 100% sure what it's for, if people are gonna like this, if it's gonna be worth it to even use in terms of a stage manager implementation, but just know that it's there, and to activate it, all you have to do is go into your control center and turn on stage manager, and when you turn it off, all those applications come back in. And another way to access stage manager is if you go into your system settings, go down to control center, you actually have the ability to show it in the menu bar. So I can press on show on menu bar and then up here, you can see that I can toggle it off and on. I'm gonna remove it from the menu bar because I'm not gonna use it too much, I don't believe so, but that is the main like visual feature that came with this update. Another cool one that came was actually a new weather application. So if you type in weather into spotlight, we'll press okay. We have a brand new dedicated weather application for Mac OS. Now, if you've been using this on iOS or iPad OS 16.1, it's gonna look exactly the same. So you can click on one of these cards, get some more in-depth information. You know, it's a nice little weather app. And that is the all new weather app for Mac OS. The next thing that we gotta show off is the brand new continuity camera. So if we go into an application like FaceTime, we'll press enter. You can actually see that right now I'm using a dedicated webcam that's actually above the laptop and over an actual monitor. You can actually go into your settings in the video settings here and use Fernando's iPhone camera and then automatically you can see that my iPhone 13 mini right here has a new little prompt that says connected to Fernando's MacBook Air. And if I turn the camera around, it'll correct its orientation and we can wave at each other and say hello. So that is the brand new continuity camera, which I think is a great little feature. As you guys can see, I can move it around and the camera is so crisp because again, you're using the rear of an iPhone camera. And this was a 13 mini, like I mentioned, and it works extremely well. At first, I thought you needed to have it mounted but as you can see, I'm moving it around, I'm pointing at different things, and it changes the orientation based on what you're doing. So if I turn it sideways, you can see that it quickly changes, which I love to see. And to stay in that same light of continuity, I can actually go into my system preferences, go into sound, and if I really wanted to, and let's say I wanted to record something with a microphone, I can actually use the dedicated microphone from any iPhone that I'm using and go into the input, click on that one, and because I am using continuity, I can use the microphone on its own as a standstill. And then you can easily just disengage by pressing disconnect or just Apple quitting completely from FaceTime. And you can see that the iPhone goes back to its regular state. The next one, which is a great addition, is actually Safari tab groups. And it's not just the groups themselves, but it's the ability to share those groups with other people. So if you guys can see that I have a money tab group right here, which I like to put in here because it loads up all the pages that I would need to A, pay my bills and B, see how much money is in the bank account. But if I really wanted to, let's say I wanted to share this with my wife, I just click on the three dots here share tab group and then you can see that with a simple text message i can send that tab group and then you can also see that they can change move modify 
remove add tabs to that tab group because they have rights to do that once they are shared. I think it's a great addition that's not only going to be beneficial for this use case that I just talked about, which is like paying bills and sharing it internally, but also with group tabs in terms of group projects or collaborating with work. Let's say you're researching a project and you need to have multiple tabs open, but you want to share those tabs with other people. Now you can do that. We also received another new application, which is actually the clock which is something I didn't really know. But if you guys are aware, Apple did not have a dedicated clock application. So now you have an application literally built for your clock, which is exactly like iOS and iPadOS. And that's gonna be a recurring theme with macOS Ventura. Yes, it's still its own desktop class browser and its own desktop class operating system, but it's taking a lot from iPadOS and iOS because again, there was a lot more iPhones than there are MacBooks out in the wild and the familiarity goes to iOS and iPadOS versus macOS. So getting more people to get into the Mac ecosystem, the easy way to do that is to make it as familiar as possible to your iPhone. So again, you do have a new stopwatch, a timer, an alarm, all new things that are welcome additions to macOS Ventura. And if we continue with that conversation, when I went into system preferences, you guys can see that it's completely different. So obviously all the settings are exactly the same, Everything that you would need is relatively the same, but now you have this new side menu instead of all the different badges that we had in previous versions of macOS. And also they changed the word from system preferences to now system settings. So everything's on the left-hand side, controllable generals here, you have your about, your software update, which another thing to mention is if you go into your software update, make sure that you click on this little I button and that you have this turned on. So install security response and system files. Make sure that toggle is turned on. By default, it is turned off but it's something that you wanna have by default so Apple is continuously patching everything, especially from a security standpoint. But this is the all new UI. You know, you have your battery indicator here, you have your battery health, which shows normal, and there's a new low power mode, which I don't know, again, if it's new or not, I'll let you guys decide that in the comments. I've never seen a low power mode on a Mac. I've only seen it on an iPhone and then recently on an iPad. There's a new low power mode, which I'm sure will save you battery in a pinch. Another thing that got a revamp is actually Spotlight. So if we Click on Spotlight on the top right hand corner, there's a couple new things about it. So first off is quick actions. So the first thing that I will mention with Spotlight is the new live lookup. So if I type in literally anything, right? So let's type in iPad OS, let's type in iPhone. It'll search not only obviously the internet, but it'll search photos with an iPhone in the text. So you can see that these are all iPhones and not only will it look up iPhone via text in images, but it also, if it finds an iPhone, it'll show it, which is an amazing thing to have, which I absolutely love. So it's going to not only look up text in a photo, which will make it a little bit more accurate, but it'll also look up actual photos. So if I type in dog and I have a picture of any dog in my photo library, that'll also show up. So that's a live lookup with Spotlight. And now let's talk about some smaller things that came in, especially from iOS. So the first thing that I will talk about is the new white noise that's built in to the settings menu. So if you go into your system settings and go into accessibility and then go down to audio, you actually have the ability to add background noise. So you can just create background noise, turn it on if you want to, to again, appease everything. So if I turn it on, you can hear that it's raining in the background. So that's a new addition, which again is built in natively. Another thing that came over from iOS and iPadOS is that in any video, if I press play, I can pause the video and highlight something from the video just with live text that came over to iPadOS 16 and iOS 16. So another beautiful thing to have that makes everything a lot easier. But again, it has to be a video that's in the system. So I can't just go into a YouTube video and start scanning stuff from there. It has to be a screen recording or a regular video that's already on your computer. Another one of my favorite features is actually also in accessibility and it's new live captions beta. So live captions, it is in beta like it states, but it lets you, again, it's a built-in native live caption. So normally if you wanna you know, go on Netflix or YouTube, there is that little CC button, which gives you live caption and auto generates captions or closed captions for videos. But if I press play here and then turn on live captions, you can see that now it's live captioning the video that's playing right here, which I love to see. And for the most part, it's pretty accurate. I can't really complain too, too much about it. And what I like about it is that it works with any audio that's coming out of the computer, even if the volume is all the way turned down. So if I pause this, I can actually also use my voice to dictate what I want. So if I wanna say, hello, how are you? And also you can see that it breaks it up. So it lets you know like, hey, you're using your microphone now and you're not taking a live caption from a YouTube video. So easy to use. And also if you guys see over here, there is a beta version of live captions for FaceTime as well, which is another beautiful addition to accessibility. 
But that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, macOS Ventura brought a lot of new features to macOS, both on the bigger side, the ones that are kind of in your face, but then also those smaller features, which like I said, are gonna make a day-to-day -day difference. So to give you guys my top three features overall that I enjoyed the most, First off, we have to talk about continuity camera. Continuity camera, it just levels up your webcam by using the best possible camera, which is on the back of your iPhone, versus the built-in webcam. Number two has to be the shareable tab groups in Safari. So last year, we were able to create those tab groups, which were great, especially for organization purposes. But now that we're able to share them and collaborate in real time with people in those tab groups, I think is awesome. And then finally, number three has to be the new system settings or system preferences, whatever Apple's calling it now. But basically, they just kind of changed the UI completely from macOS to really start to mimic iPadOS and iOS so you're a lot more familiar because it seems that there's definitely more iPhones in the world that there are our Mac OS computers. So in order to bring that synergy together, they're kind of mimicking what the system preferences looks like on iPad OS and iOS. So leave a comment down below of your top three favorite features of Mac OS and let me know if you guys were able to install it, install it correctly, and let me know if you guys are using it currently. But that is gonna do it for this video. If you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so I know that you made it to the end. And definitely be on the lookout for some more videos, especially talking about Freeform on the iPad. But that is gonna do it, everybody. If you wanna watch some more iPad OS, Mac OS, or iOS content, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here. Peace. Also, give me a follow on Twitter if you guys aren't following me yet, NandoPrince93.